so good morning so uh, after the post cardiac arrest checklist algorithm we will go to the next one how to manage a pediatric tachycardia and uh, if time permits we go ahead with the bradycardia algorithm also because it's almost the same like that what we discussed for the adult also so as in case see uh, tachycardia to call tachycardia you should have certain uh, limitations in a pediatric age group because for each age group the heart rate normal heart rate varies for example for a newborn 160 190 might be a new, normal heart rate 150 might be a normal heart rate for an one year old child 120 might be a normal heart rate so for each age group you need to know what is the normal heart rate but in a general dictum infant rate is usually less than 220 per minute in a general dictum that is if the child is coming to you if it is less than one year old less than one 220 is usually what they should have if it is above that definitely it is a pathophysiology like what we said in an adult patient above 150 is usually pathological so similarly for an infant usually it should be less than 220 if it is above 220 it is usually either an svt or any of this tachycardias like that for a children less than 180 is what you have to get like for an adult it is 150 for children it is 180 so if it is above 180 there is some pathological changes that is happening so that is one thing that you can remember easily so once the child comes with tachycardia so as we go for the initial assessment maintain the a b c airway breathing circulation airway assist breathing if needed administer oxygen connect to cardiac monitor put an iv access and always we need a 12 lead ecg so to know what type of tachycardia the child is having you should have a 12 lead ecg so that is always very very important so you have to evaluate the child uh, with a 12 lead uh, ecg and then we can have if it is whether it is a sinus tachycardia or not that's what i said for an infant if it is less than 220 it can be a sinus tachycardia for a child if it is less than 180 it can be a sinus tachycardia but you have to always see that sinus tachycardia to call it as a sinus tachycardia you should have a p wave and it should be a regular if it is not an uh, irregular if it is irregular and there is no p wave seen it is not sinus tachycardia so to call sinus tachycardia the p wave should be present and rr interval should be fixed to call it as a sinus tachycardia so the next thing after taking the ecg what you have to see we have to see how is the perfusion to the child whether the child is stable or unstable so we have to go for cardiopulmonary compromise whether there is there or not so what are the signs what chest pain and breathlessness they will not say so what you can look for is the altered mental status hypotension and signs of shock so hypotension is what 70 plus age into 2 that should be the systolic blood pressure age into 2 so if it is below that if there is hypotension 70 plus age into 2 then you have to see if there is and what you have to see if the patient is having compromise or there is no compromise so what we have to deal here is that whether the patient is stable or unstable so depending upon that what you have again you will have two types of tachycardia whether it is narrow stable wide stable right so this side we can have narrow unstable wide unstable right so these are the two possibilities that you can have you can have a narrow stable and you can have a wide stable then you can have a narrow unstable and you can have a wide unstable so let's see narrow if the patient is having stable okay first thing we'll see it's a narrow complex tachycardia and the child is stable so the child is what is narrow complex tachycardia that can be stable what is the most common one narrow complex tachycardia that can be stable is one is sinus tachycardia that you can have but you have to see what is the heart rate and next one will be what supraventricular tachycardia so supraventricular tachycardia is one of the commonest narrow complex tachycardia that you will see in a child you will not see very frequently atrial fibrillation multifocal atrial tachycardia and all you will not see very frequently but svt you will see very frequently in a child so you have to see whether it is an svt or not so svt as i already told in the last class what is it it is a regular narrow complex tachycardia with absent p waves so that is svt but the rate will be above 220 or 180 for a child see one more thing that you see here no narrow complex so we said in an adult it is three small squares in children it is less than 1.5 small squares 
to call it as narrow complex. So when we said it is 0 0.120 second, but here it is 0 0.09 second. So one half of the square is decreased. So that is one different. 120 instead of 120 milliseconds, it is 90 milliseconds or 0 0.09 seconds or 0 0.12 seconds. So 120 milliseconds in an adult and 90 milliseconds in a child. So that is one difference to differentiate between an adult uh, narrow complex and a pediatric narrow complex. So if it is above that, you can call it as, if it is above one and a half squares, we can call it as wide complex. If it is below that, we will call it as narrow complex. So probable SVT, what do you have to do? Stable SVT. What is the uh, management of a stable SVT? What do you have to do? One is carotid sinus massage, but in children, the neck is very small. So instead of that, what you can do, you can ask them to keep some ice packs over the eyelids. So that is one other method, ice packs over the eyelids, eyelids ice pack. You can keep some ice packs. That's again, we'll have some vagal manure. That is also an example for a vagal manure. So keeping ice packs, you have to see whether it is decreasing or not. Or if it is not decreasing, what you have to do? You have to give first dose of adenosine. So the dose of adenosine you need to remember 0 0.1 milligram per kilogram. Dose of adenosine is 0 0.1 milligram per kilogram. So that is the first dose. Next dose you can give 0 0.2. So like in adult we give 6 mg, 2 mg, second dose. Similarly, first dose you can give 0 0.1 mg per kg in child and second dose can be 0 0.2 mg per kg rapid bolus. Similarly, whatever we have discussed uh, for the adult patient. So that is how you have to manage an stable SVT. So stable SVT is that what you have to do. Unstable tachycardia, only one treatment that I will tell you after we finish off stable. So what you have done, you have a patient who had a cardiopulmonary compromise. Yes or no, we have went to this side. There is no uh, cardiopulmonary compromise. So the patient was probably having an SVT. P waves are absent. RR interval is regular and heart rate is above 220 for an infant or a child it is above 180 and you have confirmed that it is an uh, SVT and you have considered vagal manures and adenosine. So this is what we have discussed right now. Now we have a stable, this is another stable, you can have a stable white complex tachycardia. So you can have a stable white complex tachycardia, usually it can be what? It can be ventricular tachycardia. What you can do? Again, here there is one difference is that if the rhythm is regular, okay, and even if it is white, you can give adenosine. We said amiodarone there, but here you can give adenosine. You can give a trial of adenosine also, because adenosine also will decrease the heart rate. So adenosine can be tried. So that is the only thing that you can have. For a VT also, you can give adenosine in a pediatric age group. So probable VT, if the patient is stable, you can give adenosine. Instead of amiodarone, you can give adenosine also in a patient who is having a white complex stable tachycardia. So that concludes our all the stable tachycardias. This side is all the stable tachycardias. Now coming to this side, all unstable tachycardias, what do you have to see? What you have to do? First one, you take SVT, narrow complex SVT and the child is unstable. Even if the child is unstable, we can give adenosine. That is the one difference that it is from the adult. For unstable tachycardia in uh, uh, Adult, what do you used to do? We used to do synchronized cardioversion. Instead of that, in children also, you can give a trial of adenosine. If there is an IV access available, you can give a trial of adenosine, even if the child is unstable. You can give a trial of adenosine. So, adenosine can be given in three areas in a child. One is SVT, one is VT, and third one is an unstable SVT also. You can give a trial of adenosine. And next thing, if it is fails, next what you have to do is the cardioversion. Cardio version. So cardio version, again the dose, uh, what you have to remember is that 0 0.5 to 1 joules per kg. For all the tachycardia, it is the same. In adult, we used to say 50 to 100, 100 to 120, 120 to 200, no need to remember all those things. Just remember 0 0.5 to 1 joules per kg. So sedate the patient and you can give a synchronized cardio version. So that is for an unstable SVT, unstable SVT. Now we have an possible ventricular tachycardia which is again unstable what you can do you have to do synchronized cardioversion that's it synchronized cardioversion dose is 0 0.5 to 1 joules per kg
So basically, our tachycardia algorithm is pretty simple in a pediatric age group. We don't have multiple drugs to learn. So one thing, what you have to remember, signs of shock is there or not. If it is yes and if it is no. If it is no, we can have two possibilities, narrow complex and wide complex. Narrow complex, you can go for vagal maneuvers and adenosine. And here, you can give tri adenosine. SV, there is signs of hypotension again you can have two what all you can have narrow complex and wide complex you can still try adenosine even if it is unstable plus cardioversion synchronized cardioversion then this side wide complex tachycardia what is straight away synchronized cardioversion so what are the cutoff that you need to remember that is different from the adult heart rate above 220 for an infant and heart rate above 180 is pathological and QRS duration 0.09 seconds less than we will call it as narrow more than we will call it as wide and these are the only drugs that you need to remember in a tachycardia algorithm. So that is it there is nothing more this is simple tachycardia algorithm body, but looks complicated but it is very very simple these are only things that you need to remember. So that is regarding your tachycardia now we will just see the bradycardia algorithm also. So, again bradycardia algorithm, one difference we have already discussed. The heart rate is less than 60 and there is signs of poor perfusion, what do you need to do? Start CPR, that already we have discussed. So, patient has a bradycardia, again we need to see whether there is any cardiopulmonary compromise. If there is yes, you have to do something. If it is no, what you have to do? Stabilize airway, breathing, circulation and monitor the patient. So, if there is bradycardia with no signs of poor perfusion, you can just observe the child and monitor and get a 2 lead ECG. So that is the only thing that you need to do. If the child is does not have any compromise, just observe the child. That is more than enough. Nothing more than that you need to do. So that is for your this side. That is for your stable bradycardia. Otherwise we can call it a stable bradycardia. Now what you have said, the patient is having signs of decreased perfusion. Again we have to stabilize A, B, C. Then you have to monitor the child. Then you have to take a 2 lead ECG. IV and IVO access you need to make. Then what you have to do? You have to see CPR if heart rate is less than 60. If heart rate is less than 60, but if bradycardia persists, you have bradycardia persists, you what you have to do? You have to give some drug. What important thing that you need to do, remember is that heart rate less than 60, you are continuing CPR, but the drug there is slight difference. We used to give atropine in adult. But here the drug of choice is epinephrine. So epinephrine is the drug of choice for pediatric bradycardia. So dose of epinephrine, whatever we have learned in our cardiac arrest algorithm, the same thing, the same dose, 0.01 mg per kg. The same dose of epinephrine, you can give us an IV bolus every 3 to 5 minutes. So the same dose of epinephrine, what we learned in our cardiac arrest algorithm. So we are doing CPR. So when you are doing CPR, the same dose of epinephrine we need to give. So, epinephrine is the drug of choice initially and you want, you can give atropine, atropine can be tried but the first choice is always epinephrine but if you are planning to give epinephrine, sorry, planning to give atropine, the dose is 0.02 milligram per kg. So, in adult it was very easy, 1 mg, 1 mg, maximum 3 mg but here what you need to remember, the dose of atropine is 0.02 mg per kg and we can repeat maximum dose of 0.1 mg in a single dose and uh, initially you can give minimum dose is 0.1 mg and maximum dose is 0.5 mg. This is the maximum dose that you can give. So you can start with 0.02 mg per kg in a single shot minimum you should give at least 0.1 maximum 0.5 that is the recommendation and always look for the reversible causes of bradycardia again hypothermia hypoxia most importantly hypoxia and any medications that is beta blockers or any medication that is causing this uh, bradycardia. So bradycardia algorithm again it is very easy. So bradycardia what you have to remember if the child is having bradycardia signs of poor perfusion is there or not. If the child is stable just observe the child. The child is unstable and heart rate is less than 60 start doing CPR and start doing CPR and start giving you medications. Drug of choice is epinephrine 0.01 mg per kg dosage is the dose that you can give. If you want to give atropine for an AV block and all you are seeing some ECG and you are seeing 
complete heart blocks and all those things you can give uh, atropin but the dose of atropin is 0.02 milligram per kg so that is the dose of atropin that you need to remember and if it still fails what do you need to do you can go for trans thoracic pacing or trans venous pacing so that is the next thing so same thing that is for the adult but only one difference is drug is different there we used to give atropin and there is no cpr in adult and only CPR, uh, when we will give CPR in a pediatric, when heart rate is less than 60 in a bradycardia, we have to give CPR. So, that is the only difference between the these two algorithms. So, once you start CPR, then it is go, you have to go to the cardiac arrest algorithm. What you have to give every 3 to 5 minutes, you have to give at adrenaline 0.01 milligram per kg till the ROC is achieved and you have to look for the reversible causes of cardiac arrest. So, it is clear. So, this is the two algorithms that you have completed. So, pediatric cardiac arrest algorithm we have completed yesterday we have completed uh, post cardiac arrest algorithm we have completed bradycardia as well as tachycardia algorithm okay thank you